It is one of my favorite times of year. Times? Time. It's one of my favorite time of year. I need the grammar police. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It is my favorite time of year. Well, one of my favorite times of year, and that is the Sephora sale is coming up. If you could see my table right now of all of the foundations I have to share with you, if you don't know me already, I'm a little scattered. I'm gonna try to keep this as organized as possible, but it's me we're talking about, so have patience. If you're not already aware, the Sephora sale is happening on Friday, October 27th. That's for the Rouge members, which I am one. That is for somebody who buys a lot of products at Sephora. If you're a VIB, you get 15% off and that starts on the 31st of October. And then if you're a Beauty Insider, that starts on October 31st and you get 10% off. If you're a Rouge member like me, that means you spend a lot of money at Sephora, but it also gives you an opportunity to start the sale earlier so we don't run out of options opportunity to get the products that we want. It's a catch-22 because we spend more money, less money in our bank account, but then we get to save 20%. The code that you use online is time to save. This is also available in store, by the way, if you want to go check things out. So I'm realizing I haven't tried a lot of skincare. Some of the skincare that I use is from my nurse injector who does my Botox or Dysport. I buy some of my skincare from her. I've also been sent some skincare that I like and I only have one face to try things on. So I will share a couple things with you that I love. Paula's Choice did send this to me. This is a 2% BHA liquid exfoliant and I'm noticing that as I get older, this area right here is getting oilier for some reason and I'm getting more acne in this area as well. It is salicylic acid and that one is so good for any breakouts that you might have. It is for all skin types by the way. It clogs your pores which in turn will shrink your pores or minimize your pores so imagine if your pores are full of oil it's gonna look bigger so when you reduce the oil in your pores it's gonna appear to look smaller do you actually get to shrink your pores no I think the only thing that's proven to do that is microneedling or RF frequency I'm not sure which one it is any company that says they're going to shrink your pores like actually shrink your pores. Do some research on that. I don't believe that that's gonna happen. Your pores are your pores, it's your genetics. The other skincare product that I love is the Ilia Lip Wrap Reviving Balm. I use this and I'm actually almost out. And I love my Laneige sleeping mask. I got this little one in a Christmas kit last year and I'm sure that they have one again this year. Oh yeah, they do, right there. I bought a kit for all of my girls and they love it. I've got a sleeping lip mask in every pocket. It is one that actually stays on the lips throughout the night. It's so good. I do have a Laneige lip kit on sale, regularly $34 Canadian and this is $28. What else is on this? I would actually like to try the Summer Fridays mini lip butter bomb set. I haven't tried that one. It does have good reviews on there too. Oh, there's my Tatcha. This is the gift I'm giving away, guys. I was sent the trio by Tatcha and I'm giving that away. You have to follow me over on Instagram, tag three of your friends, and the contest ends on the 28th, of, which is Saturday. Pretty grunge. Oh, Huda Beauty has a new palette out. Ooh, I really didn't look at this. Okay, focus. Get back into the game here. I was also sent this product by Merit. This is the Great Skin. It feels really nice and it sits very nice under makeup. You shake it and then the by phase goes away. The Beauty Blenders are on sale as well. That one is regularly $106 and it's on for $69. I actually might make up a little kit for my girls. I'll put Laneige Sleeping Mask, maybe a Beauty Blender in one. It's a great idea. This is a great kit as well. That's by It Cosmetics. That's your Complexion Boosting Essentials. It's got the cleanser, the moisturizer, I believe the night cream and the eye cream. It's regularly $125 value and it's on for $72. I have used this and it's in my empties. And I just did a live stream with Jodi Menez and she said she loves the Kerastase. It's a hair oil duo and that is a value of $115 and it's on for 92. I love the Skin Fix brand. I've used this product and my skin really likes it as well. That kit is $144 value and it's on for $90. I don't know if this is helping you guys out at all because you could look through this just like I can look through this. I'm just having fun shopping with you guys. I remember when I was a kid, we used to get the Sears catalog and I would go through with my pen and circle everything that I wanted. That's how I feel about this one. There's a lip kit by 
YSL. Oh, I would like that. Regularly $91 on for $72. And I can tell you that my fit, I actually have it. Do I have it on? It's in my favorites. They don't have any in stock right now. The one that I have, this is number 15. So good. It's hydrating and I do find that this stays really well. I wanna try other colors. This one is 15. I believe that this one comes with number 15 as well. Probably this would match everybody. Looks really good. Something that I always repurchase during the Sephora sale is my Shiseido cotton pads. They're so gentle on my skin. I'm gonna actually show you what they look like. So they're nice and thick, you see? A very popular sunscreen is the glow screen, but I honestly like the unseen better. If I use the glow screen, I will put it just on the high points of my cheeks because it makes me too shiny. So I like the unseen and it goes very well under makeup as well. It almost acts like a primer. That is with an SPF 40, by the way. That's not the fun stuff for me though. Let's get on to my foundation choices. I would say that my top foundation pick of all last year and still this year is the House Labs. I have two different colors. Sometimes I mix the two. The colors I own are 280 light medium neutral and 110 light neutral. 280, Still is a little bit dark for me when I'm self-tanned, but the two of them working together gets me through from when I'm self-tanned right till, this is probably my natural color, the 110. I get compliments on my skin every time I wear that foundation. I wanna back up a little bit actually. I'm going to show you a couple tinted moisturizers. This one is actually a beauty bomb. This is by Dr. Jart and it's the BB Premium Beauty Balm Cream. The only thing I don't like about this is it comes in only four shades. So this is in medium. No, this is in light medium. I wore this yesterday. I was just going out to the drugstore to pick up some prescriptions and I felt polished and I love it. I'm gonna put a little video here of this color. Because this is a little bit dark, I went into Sephora and I looked at the light color. The light seemed really light. And then my other favorite tinted moisturizer that I use quite often is the Smashbox Halo Glow Healthy Glow All-in-One Tinted Moisturizer. This has an SPF of 25. It's light. I've recommended this to many people and it looks wonderful. I always get good responses back. They tell me that they like it and it works for them. So really good one. Another foundation that I love that is very close to a tinted moisturizer is the Merit Beauty Complexion Perfection, I think it's called. I use this in a video that I just posted recently. If I want a nice, light, even coverage that doesn't feel like I have anything on my skin, I love this product and I can use this for both my concealer and my foundation. It isn't too dry to put under my eye. I think it gives me a nice, good coverage. Let me see, do I have any redness right now? Yeah, a little bit around my nose. I am in the color Bisque, and I can just put it around here, down my nose. I can actually use that in here. Not sure why it goes on so smoothly, but it does. Yeah. By the way, this makeup look did start off with the BB cream from Dr. Jart. So I didn't start off with a full coverage. Let me zoom you in here so you can see. When I look at it in my 10 times mirror, I can't see it sitting on my skin at all. The flashes, oh my goodness. Why do I even try? It's because I don't want you guys seeing me with my hair up all the time. Other foundations that are very light are the Dior Face and Body and the Makeup Forever HD foundation. The Makeup Forever was my top favorite but they changed the formulation and once they did that, I kind of haven't been reaching for it as much. I don't know why. It's not because I didn't like it because I did test it out. I don't know why they fixed something that wasn't broken. Maybe it was an ingredient that they couldn't get their hands on. I'm not sure. I should do another video. Yeah, I will make a note to use these again. It's really good when they have minis. There's another brand that has minis as well. I bought the wrong color. This is the Luminous Silk Foundation by Giorgio Armani. Everybody loves this foundation. I struggle getting a color that matches me though. So that's why I really haven't given this a fair shot. And it's probably because I self tan. Self tanners are usually hard to match. I got this color in four. Let's see. Yeah, that's too light. I had the same issue in NARS. Everybody talks about NARS and I really have a hard time finding something. I find that their foundations are quite yellow, so I haven't had great luck with the NARS, and I really wanna try it, I feel left out. 
Okay, another favorite is the Dior Skin Glow. I always reach for my house labs more than I do this one, but this one is equally as good. Dior is probably one of my favorite brands. The eyeshadows, the Dior face and body, the Dior Skin Glow, and sometimes, in the summertime especially, I will mix the Dior Forever Matte and the Dior Forever Skin Glow together. And that way I get longer coverage because this is matte. If it's really hot, I don't necessarily want the glow because it slides off a little bit easier. I have a little section for oily skin. That's where I would use this on its own. I forgot to mention the other thing that I love about the Dior Face and Body is that it's so good to travel with. It's plastic. These are meant for professional makeup artists. If you travel a lot, look into this one. And then I have the Hourglass Ambient Light. I wasn't using this a lot because I picked the wrong color, which was a five, but I picked up the eight and I really liked it. It's so pretty. If your foundation is too light, it is gonna enhance every pore, every wrinkle, every fine line. It's not gonna look good. So cheat your color up a little bit if you can without creating a line and you'll be much happier. This one has a little bit of a different texture. It's thicker. It gives a beautiful glow, but I don't consider it as much of a glowy foundation as I do a skin-like finish. Did I put something there already? <laughs> I have three foundations on right now. And look at that. Now I'm gonna get to the foundation list for oily skin. I don't use these on their own very often, but I can if I moisturize really, really well. If you find you get a foundation that is a little bit drier for your skin. Change your prep a little bit and it may work if you don't wanna go spend more money or return it. My good friend Maury, she has an oily skin and her favorite foundation is the Estee Lauder Double Wear. It is probably the best for oily skin. I recommended this to my sister-in-law years ago as well. She's acne prone. She uses this and I think, I think she still uses this. This was years ago I recommended it to her, color matched her and she's never changed it up. So don't forget, even if you have mature skin, if you have oily skin, really your skin type is what you should be looking at. This one also is oil-free, gives beautiful coverage. My friend Maury said that she likes the Estee Lauder better. There is the Estee Lauder Light. I used to use this all the time on clients. This is a Double Wear Light Soft Matte Hydra Makeup. I believe that this color is too dark for me, so that's why I don't wear it very often. Oh, there's another video I've got to do. Okay, I'm putting that in the pile of video ideas because that actually does work. I've used this one for special occasions, for weddings. It's so pretty. It's not as matte as the other one. Anyone else with hip arthritis? <laughs> it hurts to sit this long. This has been tested by my friend who has oily, acne-prone skin as well, is the Bosma Stick Foundation. Now, I could use this as well, but again, I prepped really well. This does say on the website that it is a natural skin finish. It is good for uneven texture. It's hydrating, best for dry, combo, and normal skin. I would say that it's best for combo and oily skin, not the best for dry skin. Another great foundation for an oilier skin is the Tanti Doll. This is the Ultra Wear up to 24 hours. Anything that says up to 24 hours and is oil-free is typically more for a combination oily. Does this one match me? Where am I gonna go with this? Yeah, that one's too light. I have the Bobbi Brown Skin Long Wear Weightless Foundation as well. This is the full cover, 16 hour wear. It's been around a while actually. I have the color three and when I'm self tanned, I'm actually a four. It does have a bit of a smell to it, but the smell, it's a good smell to me, but I have great memories working for Bobbi Brown. So it could be that. It's a very natural smell. Like a, a like a natural oil smell, even though it's oil free. I'm gonna do a better video on that one too. Let's go to concealer. The concealer is a much smaller list. My absolute favorite of the year is the House Labs Triclone Concealer. I have it on today. Since I bought it, it is what I've worn every day unless I'm trying out a new concealer. It's flexible. Some people find that they don't even have to set it with powder. I do set it with powder a little bit. I know my good friend Michelle Spieler, she doesn't set it with powder. And another couple of viewers have said that they don't have to set it. It is beautiful. Favorite all-time concealer, hands down. 
My other favorite is Huda Beauty Faux Filter. This is definitely a fuller coverage, I would say. Is it fuller? Well, let's see. I'm just gonna put it on over top of what I have. That's crazy. Let's just pile three on at a time. That's the Huda, and then this is the House Labs I'm in 13 Light Neutral. And in the Huda, I am in Coconut Flakes 2.7N. I, oh, I'm using a Sephora brush. So this is the Huda Faux Filter. If I'm not seeing texture by now, it's a miracle. And then this is the House Labs. I find that the House Labs is more moisturizing, but they're both good. So it all depends on the kind of coverage you like. It's so subjective to your personality, your makeup routine, your needs, your skin. Yeah, this one looks a bit more hydrating. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that it's got a bit of glow? And the faux filter doesn't. Yeah, I think you can see that on camera. My third favorite is the Bobbi Brown Skin Full Cover Concealer. And I like the Too Faced Born This Way Concealer. Again, it is more of a full coverage concealer and I don't have to powder that very much at all. I do remember though, working at Sephora and going to use the Too Faced Born This Way concealer on some people and it exaggerated their dryness. So I don't have a lot of dryness under here. Keep that in mind when we're thinking about a concealer. Oh, by the way, this was a Sephora brush. This is like exactly like the Angie Hot and Flashy. This is number 71. Favorite corrector, Bobbi Brown Bisque. I'm in bisque or light bisque. I never let myself get to light bisque. I just use it in the corner. If you find that when you add concealer, it looks kind of gray looking or your darkness pops through, use a color corrector. I do want to try Charlotte Tilbury's corrector. Maybe that's on my wish list too. I'm gonna to have to write my notes when I'm editing this video. My favorite blushes are Hourglass. This one is called Diffused Heat. Love it. You cannot go wrong with these blushes. You cannot over apply. Mood Exposure is another one that I really like. They're for people that don't love a lot of blush. They just want a little bit of a hint of blush. Most used probably is my Dior. I have three different colors. I didn't realize I had three different colors. This is the Backstage Rosy Glow in Pink. I could probably put some on. I'm gonna use a Sephora brush actually. It's a precision powder brush. I think it's 59, it's hard to see. Will this be enough? Yeah, look at that. It's so fresh and pretty. This video was not meant to be a try on video. Should I try on Radiant Heat or I'll try on this one? This is Mood Exposure. So really, really subtle for those people that don't want a lot of blush. I never used to like a lot of blush, and now I like more. It's buildable, that one. And you see that it has that radiance. I'm gonna pop it with diffused heat, though. I kinda like those two mixed together. Hmm. Another favorite blush is Mocha by MAC. Pretty straightforward. I do like House Labs. Now, I do find that these are strong. If you're not used to wearing makeup and you don't like a lot of blush, maybe you wanna stick with the other ones. This is Watermelon Bliss. I'm gonna put a bit of this one on. This is Dragon Fruit Days. I'm gonna just have everything on. I'll just pop it on there. So a lot more pigment in this one. I'm just gonna boost this side up with, this one is a SIE. Acai, is that how you say it? And I'm a bit more careful with how I dip into these. Very pretty though, but more powerful. You see the difference? I'm starting to look a bit crazy. Blend that out. Oh, I like that. There, just soften that up. This is probably my favorite cream blush. This is by Makeup by Mario, and this is called Perfect Pink. 
There's two, actually. There's The other one is Bobbi Brown. Oh, there's three. Ah, this is Rare Beauty, and this one is called Encourage. I absolutely love this blush. It took me forever to try it. I think I tried her blushes before, and it was Joy. What was it? It wasn't my color. It was more of a light peach, and I thought, oh, I don't know what everybody's raving about, but I do now. This is gorgeous. I'm just gonna put a little bit on my hand. You gotta take my word for it because I'm not gonna try any more blushes on. It is so pretty and it gives a beautiful glow to the skin. And I find that it does stay. Let me just put that right there. So a cooler tone, both beautiful. Another beautiful cream blush is the Pot Rouge by Bobbi Brown and this one is in powder pink. Also stunning, very, very natural. It's an old time favorite of mine. Different packaging from when I used to work there, but stunning. You can see a theme, eh? I don't really go for the oranges as much or the peaches. Although I do love pomelo peach. This is a beautiful one. This is by House Labs. And I would say that that's my favorite of all of them. I don't love a lot of peaches. This one is different. And since I don't have cheeks to spare, yeah, it's kind of more of a pinky peach. My favorite contour is Westman Atelier. This is Face Trace and this is in Biscuit. It's the perfect, perfect shade for me. You can see that it's not too ashy and it's not too warm. And I'm not sure how much I have left. Maybe I should get that during the sale. I also love the Skin Transforming Skin Enhancer by Makeup by Mario. You can see, I love it. I've hit pan <laughs> and it's super, super pretty. It gives a beautiful glow to the skin. Can you even see it? I also like the Tower 28 Getty. It's so messy. I've used this quite a bit too. That is a cream as well. Brow products are very simple. I love ABH. I'm either in caramel or light brown. I love uh, Benefit Precisely My Brow. And I am in 2.5. I actually tried the taupe, which is a one, I believe. And I, I'm a 2.5. I like the warmer color better. I love the Charlotte Tilbury. It is, I don't know why I have two because you don't need to buy another one. You buy the refill, which I really like. And the refill, I believe is $19 Canadian. Oh, I didn't realize I had another one. Ah, so I gotta, I'm not gonna throw that out. I'm gonna get the refill. I'm gonna mention one thing that I don't know that many people think about. But the ABH Brow Wiz, both the lids are the same size, okay? So it doesn't matter if I mess them up. When you go to a Benefit Precisely My Brow, if you're just in a hurry and you go to stick a lid on, you will smush that pencil and ruin it. I prefer a foolproof way to do it. So that's part of why I like the Brow Wiz so much. First of all, it's a really good product, but it's made very well. The packaging will not allow me to ruin the product. I have ruined a few of them. I always prime my eyes with MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot or MAC Painterly. If not, I will use my concealer, set my concealer with powder. So that's pretty straightforward. I'm gonna talk about three eyeshadow palettes that I think everybody will get use out of. This one is MAC Connect in 4 and it is the Unfiltered Nudes. I have used this in many videos. I have it on today. It's got everything in it that you need. The other one that I use a lot is Natasha Denona I Need a New Nude Can't Speak palette and it too has a lot of options and it's got all the sparkle that I love. And we also have the Makeup by Mario Ethereal Palette. The only thing I find is that these shimmers can fall down on the cheeks, which a lot of shadows can do. In order to fix that problem, I will put something a little bit tacky there to make it not fall down. I usually use the MAC 24 hour eyeshadow primer. Anything that has a little bit of tackiness to it, I will use and it stays just fine. And I will also, before my mascara, set it with my Charlotte Tilbury setting spray. Flawless filter, I can't remember what the name of it is. It has more options for a warm tone than the I Need a Nude palette. My other go-to shadows are the Bobbi Brown Longwear Cream Shadow Sticks. You've probably seen me use these in many videos. The cream shadow sticks last a long time. They're easy to blend. You can use them as eyeliner, you can use them as eyeshadow. They come in many different colors. They come in matte and shimmer. 
That one is peach mimosa. And these will set and you don't have to worry about it. That one is taupe. You can see that that's a matte shade. This one is shore, which is a more neutral kind of cool tone. Laura Mercier has shadow sticks. They do last all day. They're really good. I've got cobblestone, brick, cafe noir. This one's dune. I really like dune. That's a great all over lid color. That one is called Au Naturel. That one's similar to Shore, but I actually like this one better. That is not coming off, you see? We've got brushes that are really good. This one is really pretty too, great for setting underneath the eye. This one is a 79 brush, I believe. This one is a 59, I believe. I've owned them for so long that the numbers are coming off. There is another Sephora brush that I really like. Really good for contour. Pinch it down the nose. You could even use this for foundation. This one is number, I don't know, I think it's 56. I use this a lot for cream blushes. This is a 40, are they all nines? This one is a 49. And these are pretty basic eyeshadow brushes. Probably would use this one the most. And that one is a 27. I hope they're still available. I don't want to waste your time. We're on lips. This, I gotta hurry up. This is gonna be forever. So got Pillow Talk 2. That one is iconic nude. Perfect if you want to outline your lips too because it's very natural, it's like a contour color. That one's a nice one, this is called Super Size Me. Makeup Forever Wherever Walnut, Rosewood from Anastasia Beverly Hills, and Muted Mauve. They're all very natural looking. And I love Pale Mauve from Bobbi Brown. That's another Charlotte Tilbury one. This one is called Love Trap. Look at those stay so well. Like I'm rubbing. And this is the eyeshadow. Still rubbing. If you have oily eyelids and have a hard time with things creasing, the shadow sticks are so good. Lipsticks. This is a Natasha Denona lipstick and this is my dream lipstick. They're all so similar. Yep, love that one. This is Taupe Beige by Anastasia Beverly Hills. And I will usually fill in my lips with the lip liner and then I'll put that over top. So that's how I get the depth in my lipstick. If you're Canadian, Lise Wache has some great glosses. This is called Natural Shine. These are made in Italy, by the way, but it's a Canadian company, and that is called Nude Addiction. This one is called Myrrh from MAC. Love MAC lipsticks. This one's called Capricious, a bit more sheer. This one is called Faux. That one is called Hug Me. Let me try Twig On. Yep, that's a classic. I should try Myrrh on too. Is that how you say it? M-E-H-R. Also good. <laughs> this is another one, Hourglass Osis. I really love the House Labs Le Crayon lipstick. And one that I really like is Mahogany Matte. Then for a great red, this is by Fenty Beauty and it's called Uncensored. I always get compliments when I wear this. It's a messy application, but I'm getting pooped. Look at that. I've worn this for Christmas parties a couple times and it lasts throughout the night. It's so good. Another really good one, I think it's 01 and it's a red. It's from the Sephora collection and it's so pretty. It stays forever too. See, that is dried right down. I would never apply this without a lip liner, but that gives you the idea. And look at how white my teeth look. Lastly, we're gonna go through some lip glosses. This is by Pat McGrath, and I think it's called Aliangelic. I don't wanna put my glasses on again. I'll list it right here. It has a beautiful reflect through it. I don't wanna ruin my nice red lipstick, but this is what happens when you put it over top. It's got an iridescence in it, and it's so pretty. It's got like a little sparkle. This would be great for a photo shoot or something. It reminds me of The Wizard of Oz, the red ruby slippers. I'm just gonna block that out a little bit. Yeah, I wanna try this. This is the new lip formula from MAC. It's called Locked Kiss, and I got the color it's so small, I can't even see it. I have not tested this one out yet. Hmm, don't pay attention to my mess. That color's really pretty. Oh, that's nice. Hmm. That feels like it's gonna stay. I look so lopsided <laughs> right now. It's right there, eh? Is that better? I give up. Longest video ever. I assume by the name that this is 
gonna stay. Top favorite powders. Number one, House Labs. Number two, Laura Mercier Blur Powder. Number three, My Daughter Stole It, the Hourglass Veil Setting Powder, and the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder. I also think the Givenchy Powder is better for an oily skin. I found that it didn't work well for my skin. And that is it. Oh, I need a drink of water. <laughs> I'm so dry. Uh, watch, I'm gonna edit this down. It'll be 20 minutes like the rest of them. I hope that's the case. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below. If you have suggestions for other people of what they should try or suggestions of what I should try next, that would be wonderful. If you like this video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button before you leave and the notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. Thank you so much for being here. I hope this helps and I will see you later. Bye.